What's going on everybody? I hope that you are all excited to do a new video with me. I'm sure you can hear it. It's raining outside for some reason. Every time I do a video, it's raining. But, but that's not what this is about. We came here to talk about some manga. And last week I did my haul video. I dropped that. Yeah, I, did, I recorded it last week. I don't know when I'm dropping this video from when I dropped that video. I think... By the time that this video comes out, my my seventh garden video should already be out and ready for your enjoyment. Um, so I've been wanting to do this video for a minute, and I have five volumes of manga that I read pretty recently. That's the way that I do these. I have five five volumes of manga that I put into each of my currently reading videos, and I do a currently reading video like every so many months, every like three to four months, I think is like how often I do do my currently reading videos i usually do them like seasonally you know like the last one i think was the summer one and this one's going to be the autumn one so let's get into this i don't want to waste too much time in the intros i don't like my intros to be super long so let's just jump right into it and these are the volumes of manga that we are going to be speaking about today I hope the rain makes a nice little, you know, ambiance in the back. You know, it gives you some ASMR as I talk about some manga that I've been reading recently. Really quick, before we get into this, I just wanted to do a quick shout out of a, of a channel that I really like. This is a dude that I'm, I've been, you know, making a pretty decent bond with, you know, that I met through YouTube. And that is a dude named Nerd core really good guy uh he does a lot of like uh chainsaw man stuff like his channel for the most part lately has been really revolving around chainsaw man if you keep up with chainsaw man he drops a video pretty much like every week that there's a volume drop for chainsaw man he drops a video about it and his his videos are really entertaining really really funny you know he talks about everything that happens in the volume and gives it gives it like pretty much like a nice bit of wit you know he makes it makes it entertaining even though the volume itself is entertaining but his commentary about the, the the things that happen within each volume i think are really well done and i really like that dude a lot so i'm gonna link his channel below if you want to check him out he's a really good dude so uh he actually did a video about this as well i haven't seen his video yet but i will after i do this i don't like to watch other people's videos about things until i do my own that's just the kind of person that i am because like i don't like having other people's thoughts in my head as i'm doing a video and it's nothing personal against any other creator but yeah if i haven't done a video about something yet or if i don't have a script or done the video or whatever i won't watch any other people's videos about a thing um and that was the crazy and that was pretty much the case with with uh paru itagaki's uh drip drip and i've been wanting to talk about this series <laughs> i've been really wanting to talk about the series so let's do this uh drip drip is a one-shot manga and this is the creator of b stars and i've never read the manga for b stars but i really liked the anime for b stars i watched the first season i still haven't seen the second season of b stars i had no idea that she actually wrote this manga i just i saw the cover art and it made me think of this movie this french movie called raw and if you've never seen raw it is one of the most bizarre movies i've ever seen but i think like just french cinema in general is some of the strongest cinema i've ever seen like French, like yeah french cinema like uh japanese and korean cinemas have some of the best filmographies like i've ever seen like park chan wook for korean cinema uh yeah uh Dake, what's his name uh the dude who did each of the killer i can't remember his name off the top of my head uh mike mikey uh takashi takashi maike i think his name is um, but yeah, he did like each of the killer. He did a bunch of like really classics. Uh, he did he, a recent one that he did was uh, First Love, um, and you know for like French movies, Brotherhood of the Wolf. If you've never seen Brotherhood of the Wolf, that is a classic, and it's actually like the costume design and whatnot is an inspiration for Bloodborne, which is one of my favorite video games ever. I have two Bloodborne tattoos. Uh, I'm not gonna show them to you right now because it's not it's not what this is about. But yeah, I have two Bloodborne tattoos and. You know, I'm like a fan, I'm an appreciator of cinema, and I love, you know, art in general, because I have this deep 
admiration for people that are able to create that are able to that able to, that are able to bring worlds into existence through either writing or through film or through really or through like whatever medium you know they have at their disposal that they're able to create something and make you feel something for a character and i saw this and it reminded me of raw and that's the reason that i picked it up i had no idea that it was baru itagaki who like i said had also written i don't know if she still writes it or not uh, i don't know if it's still ongoing or not uh b stars and i loved every second of this one shot there's actually like i think two or three more one shots at the back of this one of them including santa claus which is really funny the santa claus one was great and it's funny because there's a david harbour david harbour actually is doing a santa claus movie or made a santa claus movie that's coming out i don't know if it's coming out this year or when this is such a good read man because like this character was so well done we spent so little time with her but i wanted to spend more time with her i wanted to get to know her better and i'm not going to say too much about each thing because i don't want to spoil the story for you i don't want to spoil the stories have any of these things that I'm going to talk about. And for the most part, I'm like halfway through all of them. So I can't really spoil the ending. So I did read all of this. So I do know how this one ends. And I really honestly want more. Like I kind of want Baru Itagaki to make like a whole series about this character, dude. Because like I fell so in love with her. And like I don't, I'm trying to, I want to be careful with, you know, showing you panels. Because there is a lot of nudity. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to show you guys nudity. There's some really strongly adult stuff going on, but it's such a good manga, dude. And the characters are great. I love I love her expressions. She has the the, the greatest. She has the best like just uh, facial expressions. And there's parts of it that reminded me of like you know like I was going on about f a film and cinema and whatnot. There was parts of this that reminded me of like audition, which I think uh, Maika actually. I think he actually directed Audition, if I'm not mistaken. And Audition, if you like like slow burn type of films, Audition is a really good slow burn type of uh, film. And it uh, kind of reminded me a little bit of Carrie as well with the blood. Because this woman right here, anytime like she's around anything that she deems to be like filthy or disgusting or whatever, she gets just like the most vicious, visceral fucking nosebleed. And, and it's like brutal as hell to the point where like her nose just like explodes blood everywhere and it's like a monsoon of blood it's like it's like the shining the it's like the 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 elevator door is opening you know and the shining and all the blood comes cascading out you know when wendy's standing in front of it like this this was so much fun dude and like like i said i love this character and it's like you feel bad for her at first you know because like she's trying to form an adult connection with with men and there's this whole thing with the backstory with her mom and she's unable to form adult conne connections because of something that happened to her when she was a child and i'm not gonna get super into because like i said i don't want to spoil your enjoyment with this but i do highly recommend checking this out it is extremely adult so yeah keep that in mind uh, it's really gross out like if you like gross out stuff um this is definitely recommended i also really highly recommend you to read highly recommend you to read velveteen and mandala if you like really gross out stuff i actually did a video about velveteen and mandala but i'm not gonna link it i'm not gonna link any of my goddamn videos go look at my channel there's plenty of stuff there so yeah please if you haven't read velveteen and mandala read that and also read drip drip by baru itagaki I went on way longer than I would have liked on that one, but you know what? This is my this is my time to shine, so please bear with me as I as I talk endlessly about things that I'm really excited to talk to you all about. I don't really get to do this that often. I do one of these I haven't done one of these videos in like two weeks. I didn't do one last week. So I'm like I got all this pent up <laughs> I got all these pent up things I want to say, so I'm going to get them out. This is this is my uh, my therapy session right here, talking manga with you all. Uh, this is uh, Kemono Jihen. I mispronounced this. I, I said his name backwards in my whole video. I said Jihen Kemono, and I said it like a bunch of times like an idiot. But yeah, this story is called Kemono Jihen, and I really like it a lot. I've only read right there like half or actually I'm a little bit more than halfway through it I actually already ordered volume two I don't think I have it yet I don't think volume two is actually physically I don't think volume two is physically out yet or maybe it is but yeah I don't think I have it like uh, I'm pretty sure that I pre-ordered it so I should be having volume two pretty soon this is like quintessential shonen protagonist type of story this kid pretty much is picked on like every other protagonist in like a shonen type of story. He gets picked on. He's got these origins that 
are shrouded in mystery. You know, his parents were, his mom, I think, was, like, human, and his dad was this thing called, I think, I think they're called, like, Gemono or something. Uh, if I'm if I'm mistaken in what these the beings are called, I'll put it down here. But his dad or something is, like, a demon, essentially, and this kid, because of that, has demonic powers. And you can kind of see, you know, from the artwork that there is something supernatural about this this young man here, this youth, this, like, 11 12 13 year old kid like pretty much like you know uh shonen protagonist age and he goes through a bunch of stuff uh is the family that he was you know raised by essentially treat him like trash he's kind of like like harry potter you know living living underneath the the floorboards he's kind of like that like zero respect he's like ronnie dangerfield he's like rodney dangerfield he gets no respect no respect and I'm sure some of you are probably, like, so young that you have no idea what I'm talking about. And that kind of makes me feel like an old man. Like, I'm sure people watching this are going to be like, who the hell is Rodney, Rodney Dangerfield? And I'm going to I'm gonna feel really old. I already have gray hairs in my facial hair. And, like, I don't know how to feel about it. But, yeah, this manga, I've, like, I've really enjoyed it. Like, I, I honestly almost wasn't going to pick it up. But I think I got this on sale. And that's the reason that I ultimately ended up picking it up is that I was able to get it on sale. And it's available through Seven Seas. That's the publisher. Uh, this one was this one's available through Viz, and like I really like Viz a lot. Viz, I think, is currently my favorite publisher because they are dropping Dan to Dan, and Dan to Dan is my favorite manga at the moment. And I'm gonna do another video about Dan to Dan coming up, so keep an eye out for that. It's gonna be like really spoilery because it's I'm just gonna like save my thoughts about Dan to Dan, but this is not currently about that. This dude right here comes to a village and he meets a young ass boy. That sounded really wrong. He comes to a village and he, he meets this young dude right here. And he knows all about this dude. He knows that he's got like this secret power and that it's cool because he's going to take him along with him back to the big old city. And there they're going to be fighting demons because this is a shonen story. And that's what shonen characters do. They fight demons. They fight the bad guy. They... They prove that even though they are part of the thing that people should be afraid of or people are afraid of, that they're not all terrible. I was I just like I'm thinking like I got like like Naruto vibes. You know, like like uh yeah, like Naruto fucking bleach. Uh Doron Dororon, which is actually a really good story as well. That one that wasn't doesn't have a physical yet. Doron Dororon doesn't have a physical yet, but it's kinda of the same deal. It's like this kid who like befriends this weird little creature and they end up, you know, be joining this girl who's like a samurai and Doron Doron and it's a really good story. I've I've kind of paused reading it to pretty much just read nothing but Dan to Dan and I have no regrets because I love that story so much, dude. Like I cannot stop reading it. But I was reading Doron Doron for a while and I'm gonna try to get back into it because like I wanna do a video about that as well. Uh, before maybe I'll maybe I'll wait until the the physical drops for people that are maybe like would rather wait until there's physical volumes in front of them to read. So maybe I'll wait until that the physical drops if and when the physical drops to do a video about that series and then by then you know I'll be a little bit further into it myself. I've I've been really enjoying this so far. You know like this kid lives in like this dirt poor type of uh, town. You know like nobody really likes him. Everybody makes fun of him. His aunts. Uh, a nasty person uh she's not really a nice person though like she's literally on petunia from from um from harry potter she's not a nice person her kid is dudley he's just a douche the, the, their son's a douche she's she's mean and you know this kid is just like really blank doesn't really have much emotion going on and there's actually an explanation for why he is you know like really stoic the way that he is and the dude that, you know, comes to meet him and essentially recruit him is, like, really cool, you know, like, really suave. He's, like, the the big brother type of character you see in, like, a lot of these these uh, these shonen type of stories. The the one that I'm thinking of right now is, like, uh, Guden Lagan. You remember the dude from Guden Lagan who was, like, the big brother type? Like, that's kind of the vibes that I get from him. So, yeah, I mean, like, I really like this story a lot. And, yeah, it's, like, if you like shonen stories, I think you're going to like this. I've really enjoyed it myself. I'm kind of all over the place. I do like shonen stuff, as you can see. I've got a bunch of Shaman King, you know, down there. And 
I'm more than anything. I'm like super into like seinen because that's just like I've always been more into seinen. But like I do like, I do like stories that you know revolve around younger protagonists that are essentially like the underdog that got to fight against the odds and prove themselves. And this definitely feels like it's going to be one of those type of stories. So next up we have Momo the Blood Taker. So this is actually not a terrible story. Uh, I really like the artwork for it. Uh, this is what kind of sold me on it. It was the artwork, as you can see right there. It's got like a really nice kind of sheen to the cover. Uh, this girl right here is a vampire. I think she's like 200 and something years old, but she looks like she's 12. So like, yeah, I mean, do with that what you will. But other than that, like the story is really well drawn and pretty much there's this dude who's like a detective and he's kind of like a goofy dude. You know, he is after a guy that looks like, I want to say, he looks like Muzan from, from Demon Slayer. I think that's what the guy's name is, Muzan, who looks like, like Michael Jackson. He looks kind of like him, and I'll show you a picture, I'll put a picture of him up there somewhere. And there's parts of this that really remind me of, like, MPD Psycho, which, which, um, Takashi Maike, or whoever you pronounce his name, I... Uh, I'm not really sure how his name is pronounced, but but yeah, he, I'm pretty sure he did the film version of this, the, not this manga, but MPD Psycho. And like I said, this, this kind of reminds me of MPD Psycho, and there he is right there. He's got the drip going on. And yeah, like I'm halfway through this right now. I think it's a pretty decent story. There's parts of it that are a little questionable especially towards the middle of the story, but I already ordered volume two, so I'm going to keep reading it and see, you know, where it goes. But for the most part, you know, despite the parts of it that are, like I said, are a little bit questionable, I really like the artwork a lot. I think it's really solid artwork, really well drawn. And it's really brutal too. Like the violence is pretty, pretty dark. And it kind of reminds me of like, let the right one in, you know, uh, the French film, let the right one in, uh, Shuzo Oshimi's happiness, uh, and like I said, you know, MPD Psycho, um, a little bit of like vampires, uh, John Carpenter's, you know, cynical take on vampires, which is like my favorite take on vampires. Like I just like, I like, you know, just cynicism in general. Like I'm a big fan of cynicism because I'm actually like a really cynical person in real life. Like I'm like cynical as hell about everything. So, um, so I just really like, you know, dark and gritty and, you know, uh, things that are for the most part challenging and not you know, super pleasant. And I think that this does a pretty good job in certain aspects of not being pleasant, of being in a way challenging. And I think that's why I'm such a big fan of like, just, you know, the work of Shuzo Oshimi. And like I said, um, this reminds you of Shuzo Oshimi's happiness. And I have, I did a video about happiness by Shuzo Oshimi. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of like the stuff that I'm into. I like things that aren't super romanticized. I like you know, more dark, gritty type of stories, but I do like, you know, uh, cutesy stuff. I did do a video about like, you know, rom-com manga. So I'm not 100% just this miserable human being that just, you know, exists on coal and misery. Um, I want to see where this is going to go. So if you like, you know, like, uh, vampires and there's kind of like magical girl thing going on with her where she does kind of like do like the magical girl kind of poses, you know, uh, like the Sailor Moon type of uh, scythe type poses. So there's a little bit of that. But, you know, she is a vampire and I don't know, like 200 or something years old. Like, but she looks like she's 12. Well, like I said, you know, the artwork is really well drawn. And that's that to me is like the biggest draw for anything that I read is like I have to be an enjoyer of the artwork so like if the artwork isn't strong it has to ha it better have like a strong story because like if it doesn't have good artwork or a good story that i just i have no no interest i have no reason to try to bother to stick it out or anything yeah i mean i definitely would you know recommend checking this out if you know you like what is essentially revenge tales with the dude that this girl partners up with you know being a person who is out for revenge and i guess she has her own you know, reasons for doing the things that she is doing. And it reminds me of this this anime that I watched called uh, Cop Craft. So, yeah, I mean, check it out if you, if you feel up to learning about 
vampires and revenge. <laughs> So this is a series that I was not a fan of the first volume, and I think I've mentioned that in at least like maybe two other videos. Like I wasn't a fan of the first volume of Chained Soldier, but I really like this second volume. And I picked it up just because I, I wanted to just give it another shot. And I kind of did the same thing with Crazy Food Truck, where like I wasn't a big fan of the first volume of Crazy Food Truck, so I got... But I ended up picking up the second volume of Crazy Food Truck anyway, and I'm going to be reading that. I don't know when, probably soon. Like, I'm gonna not be going super crazy with putting out videos coming up because, like, I got like, a lot of stuff going on. So, I'm gonna be slowing down a little bit with my video drops, but I'm still gonna be making them. But yeah, I'm gonna be slowing down a little bit. So, I'm gonna try to get more stuff read so I could do like better videos. Maybe it'll, it'll probably end up being less videos, but they'll, they'll hopefully be like better videos. So, it's not like I'm gonna go away. I'm not going anywhere, but yeah, I just wanna like try to improve my content i feel like you guys deserve that i don't want to just keep doing the same thing over and over i feel like that's going to become stagnant especially when i've almost done like a hundred videos on this channel which is really wild to think about like i've done almost a hundred videos this actually got really pretty decent uh obviously you're, gonna, you're not going to start from volume two you're going to start from volume one so if you liked volume one or if you were kind of on the fence with volume one and you're wondering if you should you know, keep going and getting get into volume two. I definitely think that it's worth getting into volume two because there's a character in volume one that I could not stand personally. And that is this girl right here. I could not stand her. She annoyed the living hell out of me. And she actually is redeemed for me in volume two. And I did not think that was going to happen because like, I just could not stand her in volume one. And like, I just can't stand people that are like that in real life because I've known people in real life that kind of have the mentality that she does. And they're just really like, just really rude for no reason at all. And yeah, she bugged the hell out of me. This girl is a lot of fun though on the cover. And if you don't know what the series is about, it is pretty much like, a, I don't know if I said this already in this, in this, but not or not, but it's pretty much like high school DXD. Uh, this is definitely like a high school DXD reskin. And there's this dude who becomes like ensnared in this thing with these girls. And it reminds me of like uh, Slasher Girls. I've mentioned I mentioned Slasher Girls in another video. I think in like two other videos that I did, I mentioned Slasher Girls. Kind of reminds me of that, that series where like there's this dude also in Slasher Girls. And also in like high school DXD, there's this dude who essentially becomes like a slave or... or becomes like a catalyst like he becomes a part of this whole where he has to play an integral part which is just like always like this random integral part that's like really pervy and like really uh pr like adolescent boy type of fantasy thing that is like his purpose and being you know being involved that he has to you know kiss the girl or whatever so that she can transform or you know just be there be her instrument and I think in Japanese it's like chained slave or something. So when they they translated it into English, they couldn't they couldn't call it chained slave, so they called it chained soldier. I'm gonna pull up a screenshot or something. I think that's what I'm, I think that's the truth. I'm not, you know, 100 certain or not, but I'll put it I'll put it like right there. If it really was is called chained slave, but I think that's what it's actually called. And yeah, they're pretty much this dude, you know, plays that part, you know, where he gets put into this house with these girls and he's essentially their slave and he has to do whatever they say otherwise they will execute him he ends up you know going to this this school i think i think that's what the thing is he's the first dude to go like this all girl school like is the is the case with a lot of these series and anime and manga there's this dude who you know, he goes to this like you know all girl school or whatever and these girls eat like what is essentially, I think like a plum or a peach or something. And it gives them, you know, like these crazy powers and he ends up getting swept up into it and he becomes kind of like a monster of sorts. And he helps the girls fight. He helps the girls fight, you know, other monsters. It got a lot better. I think in this volume, there's definitely fan service. So if you're like into the fan service side of stuff, you like the etchy kind of manga, then this is definitely... I think one that's worth checking out, it's not like extremely like fan service heavy. Like this isn't Parallel Paradise. It's not Destiny Lovers. It's not that, you know, that strong. Like you're not going to see panties or see like super explicit, you know, type of uh, 
type of content you know every other page there's actually more story and and there is like you know the illicit lewd type of stuff and some of it's like really specific and it's really fetish fetishized for the most part around the dude the lead protagonists uh you know kinks and interests and anytime that he transforms the lead the lead uh, girl in the series has to you know fulfill one of his wishes each time she draws out his power it's like the uh the contract that she has with him where wherever whenever she draws out his power that she has to you know do something weird and lewd that he is into and that's pretty much like the biggest lewd perverted whatever part of it for the most part it is just like a standard pretty much turning into like a harm story it's little by little turning into a harm story so like i'm sure by the end of this this volume or even by volume three it's going to be a full-blown harm story so if you're into that sort of thing yeah i mean chain soldier like i said the first volume is okay it's kind of mediocre but then volume two really picks up so hopefully volume three you know even picks it up even further and it gets it gets better still and this is the Barnes and Noble edition of Tokyo Revengers Volumes One and Two. Uh, I did a video when I went to I went on a work trip to Orlando, uh, like a couple months ago, I think at this point. And while I was there, I wanted to like explore Orlando a little bit, and I wanted to hit up a bunch of a uh, bunch of Barnes and Nobles. And like my my goal at the beginning of it was to hunt down this volume of tokyo revengers this barnes and noble volume and i ended up getting it and i filmed myself you know in the barnes and noble getting this volume of tokyo revengers and i've been reading it i saw the anime so like i know you know what happens for a pretty decent chunk of the story until until uh, i don't want to give spoilers but i will say that it involves a character telling another character you're my hero or you are my hero that's all i'm gonna say as far as spoilers go because i don't want to spoil this for anybody but if you know what i'm talking about then that's that's pretty much how far i got and please do not elaborate in the comments just say okay i know where you are in the story or whatever but that's all that's all that needs to be said because even that's not really like big of a spoiler if you have no idea what i'm talking about uh so this is a really good story. I don't know how else to describe it. This is like a re-zero come and see, you know what I mean? Like that, that Russian film from like the seventies come and see. That's like what this makes you think of like re-zero meets like come and see. And that's like a really good, uh, example of like the Russian, I guess I want to say art house, but I don't know if that's really the correct word to use, you know, like just Russian films that came out for a period of time in the 70s, like Tarkovsky, you know, like just these really surreal, really dark and brooding and brutal films. And Come and See is a war movie through the eyes of like a 13 or 14 year old kid. And it's like they put this kid, this actor through so much shit that like he just is traumatized by the end of it. Like you believe the looks on his face where he just looks defeated he looks just beat to a bloody pulp and i get the vibes i get those vibes you know reading tokyo revengers because this is a story like i said like re-zero so like if you don't know like anything at all about tokyo revengers you've never seen the anime you've never read the manga this dude right here is a grown man now and this is the this is the barnes and noble noble edition of the of the uh the manga so in the the standard edition it's the older version of him so i'll put the standard edition right there so you can see them so you can see them side by side so pretty much this dude right here this is him as a teenager and then the one over there is him now as an adult and pretty much like he grew up and became just like a slacker and he has like no real ambitions no real goals he's a horror essentially his apartment's disgusting and he ends up getting thrust he gets pushed in front of a train and through that he somehow ends up in the past and while he's in the past he decides to try to he tries to correct some of his mistakes into the future and tries to save his ex-girlfriend who in his present in the future gets hit by a truck her and her little brother get killed by a truck they they kind of formulate a plan for for takamichi to go into the past and try to change the events of the past so that the future has a much better outcome 
But if you've seen ReZero, if you've read the light novels or the, the manga or whatever, you already know that that sort of thing never comes out clean. It's also like, uh, like, oh God, what was that story? Steins Gate. It's like Steins Gate as well, like Butterfly Effect with Ashton Kutcher. You know, we're like, it's like you keep going into the past to try to fix the future. And every time you go into the past, you just fuck it up. And it's just like, it just doesn't, you know, ever go the way that you think it's going to go every time you go into the past and try to fix something. Uh, um, what was that game? Uh, Life is Strange. Life is Strange. You know, that game broke my fucking heart. That game broke. That game broke like every inch of my, my goddamn heart, dude. But, but yeah, you know, it's like these things where it's like you try to go into the past and you try to fix the future and... It just doesn't work out that way. And that's kind of what's going on here. Where this dude, he just keeps going back. And he keeps trying to make things right. And it just keeps not going the way that he wants it to go. And I don't want to say too much about, you know, the inner workings. And, you know, what leads to what and where it goes and whatnot. I think it's really well done. Really well detailed. Really well drawn. I don't know if I've shown you too much of the artwork. But I think it's really good artwork. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of the anime. So, like, I almost didn't even want to get the manga because i didn't like the anime that much but reading the manga like i'm already like really invested in the manga and i'm hoping that because i did hear like manga readers say that oh yeah the manga is so much better but people always just say that in general about like the written version of a thing versus you know the filmed version of it or the animated version of it so i think it's all ultimately subjective but i'm gonna give the manga shot i already have volumes uh, three and four this is volumes one and two of the manga in this omnibus edition and these are these have been coming out like i think this year they started to release and i think i got volumes three and four in another omnibus and then i may eventually also order the uh, omnibus with volumes five and six but yeah like i really like the characters in the story like one of my favorite characters is a dude named draken uh there's this this gang leader named mikey and they call this dude Takemichi, you know, because his name is Takemichi, but they call him Takemichi, you know, like they purposefully, uh, you know, mess his name up, make it sound weird. And yeah, I mean, I definitely highly recommend checking this out if you're into this sort of story, you know, like back and forth into the future, trying to fix the future, but just making a horrible mess of it in the process. And the characters are a lot of fun, they're really entertaining. And yeah, like I read, I saw the anime and like, I wasn't like a huge fan of it, but it wasn't god awful. I mean, I did watch the whole thing. I did kind of have to like force myself to finish it. So like the last like so many episodes of it were not that great, but it did have a strong intro. And like I really like the intro of the show. You know, like where where like it shows all the characters and whatnot, and you see them all in their uniform. I thought that was really cool. And so that kind of kept me watching it as well because I wanted to see, you know, what happened next with the characters. But I kind of, in the end, ended up kind of dragging my feet and kind of forcing myself to keep up with it because I really just kind of lost interest in, in the whole thing. But yeah, I mean, this is definitely worth picking up. I don't know if you're going to be able to get your hands on this edition anymore because these were like really limited editions that were available through Barnes and Noble, but you can still get the other version that's of, you know, the older Takemichi with his, uh, I think he's wearing like a red jumper or red hoodie. I mean, he's got like black hair or whatever. So those were my picks. Those are the five manga that I am currently in the middle of only this one. I'm actually finished. I've finished reading. I want to set these up so I can show them to you one more time. So these are all the series that I talked about today. Drip Trip by Paru Itagaki. Uh, we've got Kemo no Jihan. I'm sorry if I'm not saying everybody's names. I don't know all of the mangaka's names off the top of my head. This is Sho Aimoto. Uh, like I said, sorry, I don't know like all these mangaka's names off the top of my head. I kind of just started reading these as like first volumes for some of these some of these creators. Uh, this is Momo, the Blood Taker by Akira Sugito. Uh, Akira Sugito, Momo, the Blood Taker. Uh, and then we got Chain Soldier. This is actually done by two different artists. One being the artist and one being the mangaka that wrote the story. And the, the dude that wrote the story is... Or the person, because I don't know if it's a dude or not. The person that wrote the story is uh, Takahiro. And that's it. That's the only name we got. And then the artist is uh, Yohei Takemura. So that's the, the artists that... The, the, the mangaka... or They're both essentially mangakas. That created that story. And then for Tokyo Revengers, we got uh, Ken Wakui. So we got Ken Wakui. 
Gui, who did Tokyo Revengers, and yeah, I don't know if these artists or if these mangaka have done any other series. If they have, I'd love to know what other series. I'd love to know what other series they've done that you've read. Other than Paru Itagaki, I know she did B Stars. And I've got this manga right here, The Music of Mari, that I'm gonna, or Marie, I'm sorry, The Music of Marie that I'm gonna be reading pretty soon for another video. So be on the lookout for this one. If you've read this manga, I'd love to know your thoughts about it. Uh, this dude wrote Suicide Club, which I had no idea that is incredibly rad to me because I love the Suicide Club uh, film. So, yeah, it's going to be wild to read this. And he also did, like, another really classic manga that I always wanted to read and never read. Uh, Lychee something. I forgot what it's called, but I'll put it I'll put it right there. Uh, that, that manga that he did, which is, like, a really classic, really popular manga that's, like, I guess, like a, like, a cult manga. And maybe I'll do a video about it because I do want to get back into doing, like, why you should read about, like, more obscure stuff. Because that's kind of, like, what my why you should read were essentially, like... What we're started as is like a way to talk about manga that like a lot of people weren't talking about. And at some point I just started talking about like more mainstream stuff. But I do want to get back into, you know, talking about stuff that like not a lot of people are talking about. Like witches. I did a video about witches. So I want to, so I'm going to do a why you should read about this at some point. Because yeah, I want to get back into talking about like more obscure stuff that I don't really ever see anyone at all talk about. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. My name is Oscar. Please take care of yourselves.